Hey guys, it's Damon again at California Carnivores. Where else would I be? I'm here always. Um, not that that's a bad thing, but I'm definitely ever present. So, as you may recall, a few years ago, our Amorphophallus titanum uh, bloomed here, and it was a big fuss. We had thousands of people come through. And this is her now. We named her Audrey when she bloomed. She was the 239th one to flower. I'm saying she, but actually there's both sexes on the flower. Um, so there's pollen, and the potential to make um, the potential to make seeds, but on ours we didn't want to stress it, and so we didn't pollinate the flower actually. But we did take pollen from her from this plant, and then we sent it uh, to another flower in the Czech Republic at a botanical garden there, and they pollinated it, and it made a whole ton of seeds. And one of the amazing cool deals is when you do a deal like that, you send half the pollen out, you get half the seeds back, and so they sent us the seeds. And I think it was a couple years ago. Um, it took him a while to germinate. So this is about a two-year-old baby amorphophallus titanum. How cool is that? And I think we ended up with about a hundred of them, and we've been selling them. Um, so if you wanted to give one a try and be the, you know, be one of the people that blooms an amorphophallus titanum, it's a major horticultural achievement. If you, but we've been getting a lot of questions about how do you take care of one if you decide to take this on. And one of the reasons you don't see them everywhere, and one of the reasons that it was the 239th one to bloom, and not the 10,000th one to bloom in cultivation, is they need it very warm. This is our lowland part of the greenhouse. It's in the back of the greenhouse. Um, if you come for a visit, make sure you check it out. Lots of people miss it because it's kind of tucked away. But this room is kept exceptionally warm. The, out, the, red part, the rest of the greenhouse is highland, uh, highland greenhouse, and so that means it gets cold at night. And here, we need to keep it as close to 80 degrees Fahrenheit as possible, which even in California is an expensive thing to do. And it's a really big plant. This is, this is Audrey now. Um, and this is a single leaf actually that's attached to a giant bulb down there. That bulb weighed about 50 pounds uh, when it bloomed and it probably weighs a little bit more than that now. Um, but this plant, this entire giant thing, needs to be kept at about 80 degrees all the time. And that can be a challenge for most of us. Now, if you're in Florida or Hawaii, why are you not growing an amorphous titanium already? Buy one, you should have one. But if you're the rest of the country, um, you're gonna need a big greenhouse. In fact, this greenhouse will eventually not be tall enough. It can get 15 to 20 feet tall. And so you do need a really tall greenhouse too. Um, but at the very least, for the first 10 years to bloom it, we kept it in this to bloom it. Um, and it was pressed right up against the top of the ceiling right before the flower came up, but we can keep it. At any rate, that's one of the things, just keeping it warm. The other thing is they can rot, and so you don't want to keep it too wet. You, you want to get a uh, really open potting soil with lots of lava rock or pumice or sand to open it up, maybe a little of all three. A really nice potting soil is a good idea too. And then a nice big pot so that there's room. Although you, you can see this one's pressing out on the side of the pot and it still looks pretty great. So if you don't have a ton of room, you can keep it a little under potted. Um, and then just not sopping wet all the time. You don't want to rot that big corm that's down there. It's basically just like a big starchy potato so it can rot. Um, the, the leaves come up and they last for about a year a piece on a big one like this anyways. And so it took us about 10 leaves before we finally got the flower. Um, fertilizing is a great idea. We sell the Maxi Fertilizer, or you can put some of the Osmocote that we put into Pimpy's pitchers right on top of it. Um, it's a great idea to fertilize it a lot while it's in active growth. And then once, once this leaf is done, it's just going to fall off. We always call it the flumping around here because it's almost like just, you know, just, uh, disposing of a body. There's this giant 30 pound fleshy brown thing laying there. We drag it out back and put it in the compost pile. But we call that the flumping because we're weird. At any rate, oh, there's Toby. That's our greenhouse cat, Toby. Just hearing about the flump thing gets him all excited. At any rate, after the leaf falls off, it is going to need a dry period. It has to be, um, you need to pretty much stop watering at that point and let that corn get really, really dry. And as I talk about a lot with plants, you just want to follow their lead. And so when you see the new leaf emerging about four to six weeks, start watering it again. And don't fuss about it till then. It's not so much about the timing, it's just about what the plant is doing. So just watch your plants and they'll tell you what you need to do. But that's about all you really need to know to grow about one. Get a big greenhouse, keep it warm, don't water it too much.